Okay, so hello, good afternoon. Am I audible to everyone? Okay, this uh, is the Alpha DS uh, book club. Like uh, last week, I did introduce uh, the book, which is the Alpha Data Science book. And I, in the introduction, I, I explained that the book is broken down uh, where I showed uh, the, the, uh, the data science workflow the project, the, 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 the pathway in which every data science project has to follow. Where I say we need to import a data set, we need, we need to tidy it, we need to do some data transformation, which I summarize as data wrangling. So today we'll be looking at the first part of the book, uh, which is data visualization. And Mr. Michael, uh, he do volunteer to present uh, this chapter. So. I will give the floor to Mr. Michael. He should take us uh, through the chapter. So Mr. Michael, over to you. So good, good evening, everyone. I am Michael from Nigeria. I currently study at the University of Ibadan. I am currently studying psychology, clinical psychology, uh, master's degree in clinical psychology. So, um, to start, I want us to also introduce ourselves uh, in the nature of how the program goes. You need to, you are not sharing your screen. Can you all hear me? Did you get my introduction? Yes, yes, I mean your screen, you are not sharing your screen. Okay. Can you all see my screen now? Yes, just uh, now no, you are sharing a different screen. This is loading. OK, yeah. Start from the beginning. So uh, would you want um, the participants to introduce themselves or no, should I go on? With just, them? just go on uh, with your presentation. you do is that you see those three dash line you can click on it to collapse the page at the top those three you see the three dash is it dash or four lines at the top if you click on it this this title page it will collapse everything so that we can see the book clearly yes. at the top of the page before you see the box for search box, before that search box, if you click on that dash line, it will collapse those titles of the book. The content, it will collapse the contents so we can see the book clearly. Can you all see the book clearly now? Yes, but you have not collapsed it. At the uh, top, before the search bar, Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Just click on it. Yes, perfect. So you can go ahead. So today we'll be um, examining um, the next um, chapter, which is data visualization. So I'll start with the learning objective. So the first thing we want to do in this uh, in this in this in this class is to learn the basic structure of gg.2 then we learn data transformation through uh, the, the data transformation verbs select filter create and summarize then we uh, examine the combination of visualization and transformation which is known as the exploratory data analysis so the learning objectives 
first we are to learn we are to learn how to load the tidyverse which is a family of packages then we learn how to produce simple plots with ggplot2 yep. then we use the are aesthetic are you going yes i think one of the participants needs to mute are you can fade Muhammad mute so that it will not um, distract me. And I hope everyone helps. Please, can. everyone can just mute. I hope everyone else can hear me. I want to be sure I am carrying everyone out. No, yes, you are audible. We can hear you. Just go ahead. All right. Thank you. So we learn how to use the aesthetic function, aesthetic mapping to produce complex plots. Then we learn how to deal with common uh, problems in programming. R. Then we learn how to produce multiple uh, plots with facet function. Then we learn how to combine multiple geometric geometry function, geom objects to produce more complex plots. But um, after that, we learn how to recognize the interaction between um, stats, a function, stats function, and geom function. Then we use the position arguments to control the data layout. Afterwards, we use alternative coordinate systems for plotting in ggplot2. And finally, we describe the components of the layered grammar of graphics, which is the ggplot. So the first thing uh, we learn is how to load packages in R. So we use install dot packages, then in quotation mark, we put the package name there. So for instance, if we want to install tidyverse, we 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 we, we type install dot packages in quote tidyverse then we press our control enter for those of us using Windows like I do. So why do we need to install packages before, before we use them? Because um, packages determine the functionality that we want to, to utilize during our programming on R. So without installing a package, you may not be able to use certain functions that come with that package. So after loading the package, we use this function library in bracket then package package name to load the package in R. We only need to load uh, install the package once. Then after that, in our uh, subsequent sessions, we load we load the the package through library in brackets, through the library function. Now there is um, an important difference we must take note of. When installing packages, we always put the package name in quotes. But when we are loading it, we, we, we don't put a quotation mark. So after, for every session, we have to load our packages so so to load tidyverse we use this example here i hope you all can hear where the, my mouse is i can see where my mouse is yeah. yes, yes. so when we load it this is this is the output we see in our r console the loading of 
my uh, of my browser, the network here is quite poor. So the first step is how to visualize your data using ggplot2. So according to Hadley Wicker, the uh, the the developer of this of this uh, package. It says that ggplot is a plotting system for R based on the grammar of graphics. So we can see that ggplot derives its, its names from grammar of graphics, grammar of graphics plot two, which tries to take the good part of the base and lattice graphics and none of the bad parts. It can take care of many of the fiddly details that make plotting a hassle like drawing legends as well as providing a powerful model for graphics that make it easy to produce complex multi-layered graphics. So the ggplot2 package is one of the tidyverse packages. So when we install tidyverse, ggplot2 comes with it. So it lets us build up plots layer by layer. So this is the structure of the ggplot package. So we, we instantiate the ggplot function, then in brackets, we specify our data, we write data, then we, we use where this data in capital letter is to, we, we replace it with the data we are working with. Then after, after the first base, uh, the base of the data, which is the ggplot data equals to data, we add a plus, sign there in our next line we instantiate the zoom function then in brackets we use the aesthetic mapping we see aes which is a function for mapping but before we for for doing that we have to um, write out mapping equals to aesthetics then we now uh, uh, impute our variables and where we find mappings and capture data. I hope we are all following. Can we hear me? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So as explained in as explained in the next line, we use ggplot, which is the first line to set up a base, a base plot with data. Then we use the geom function to add geometry. We have many kinds of geometry. We'll get to that in the course of the, of the um, meeting. So we use mapping to map visual properties. When we are mapping, we use the aesthetic function to do the mapping. So the name is short for aesthetics. This AES is short for aesthetics. So all that little things, we can, we, we, we should know is that when we want to know what a function does, we use um, this, we, we type out the question mark before the function name. Or uh, another fast way we can do it is to um, hover over the, the, the function name and press our F1 button at the top of our keyboard. I think that's 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 one of the fastest ways we can do it. But if you can do that, we can just type your function, um, type type out the question mark, then add the function name, then you press your control enter key. It will show you um, in the in the in the in the box for for uh, showing help to show you the properties of the function. So we can also learn more about Tidyverse and all the function in this web website here. And the exercises solutions are available at the, the GitHub um, link there. So after you have loaded the library, you can start building your plot. So if you want to make an empty, empty plot, we just type out ggplot in brackets, then we add, our our ge geometry uh, our geometry function. So because ggplot has no 
no um, element in it and geom blank also is empty we find an empty blank canvas blank plot here so the ggplot function can be used by adding data so we have to add our data inside the function as our argument then after that we use mapping as the argument so for instance um okay this this is also a, a this is also a, a repeat of the structure i showed earlier so if we want to work on ggplot we just call out the ggplot function then we we put data equals to the data we are working with then comma then we we map it using the aesthetic function now there are two ways we see x and y here X and Y refers to the variable we want to know their relationships, their relationship. We may need to specify what our X will be and what our Y will be. Usually, you may not need to specify, but for those who, are, who may confuse the two, you may need to just specify what your X should be and what your Y should be. But if you don't want to just know that X comes first, then Y comes next. Then after after the G, uh, after we have set up the base and the mapping, we can then add the geom function to to specify how we want our map to our plots to appear. So can I chip in something a little bit before you proceed? Hello. Can I chip in something? Hello. Yes, can I chip so in something? Please, okay. Just go back to the, the oh. previous slide. Um, you have to pardon me. My my network okay. here is quite poor. Okay, no problem. So which, which one just go down. Just scroll down to the, yeah, you can leave it here. Okay, from here, I want to say that if you are, yes, you can anyway, you can leave it like this, no problem. But I would have preferred a place where we have aesthetic mapping where you also specify X, Y. I think it will be down. Just scroll down a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, you just leave it like this. Yes, it's okay. So I would like to say, you know, remember in the instance, you said when you call the ggplot function, you pass in the data, it shows you the blank canvas. So uh, what I want to say, if you are familiar with the tidyverse, you must have been used to the pipe. Okay, you know the pipe, we use the pipe to pass argument that is in the left hand side to the next function in the right hand side. So the plus sign in which we are getting here in ggplot is like a pipe because we are using it to add layers upon layers. Because why would they use the plus in ggplot is that because the pipe, ggplot, when ggplot was developed, by that time they have not discovered the pipe. So that is why in ggplot they use plus sign as the pipe, because we use it to pipe, we are, we are adding layers upon layers. And also you made mention of the aesthetic mapping. Aesthetic mapping is like, we have a data set, we have called ggplot, we have a data, we have passed in our data set. So it's like we are linking variables in which we found that are in the data set to the visual properties of the plots. Because within the aesthetic, we say what is going to the X, he said it, what is going to the Y. And there are also other aesthetic properties like the color. We can have a certain discrete variable in our data set. We can say, I want you to color this by this certain variable. So ggplot, after doing all the statistics, is going to scale it in such a way that uh, the language in which the system will understand. So guys, we are going to see the color. We can also have another discrete value where say, let the shape be equals to this value. And we can also, within the aesthetic, we can also uh, specify the transparency, but just proceed. I think there is a resources down in which uh, Proceed so that I will not delay. 
Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, we'll now go to uh, the geometry function, how to set up the geometry function. So there are several different types of geom function. So we have the point geom point, which shows you the scatter plot. Then we see we have the line plot uh, geom line, which shows um, a line running through, uh, connecting the 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 points in the plot. We have the geom smooth, the histogram. We have the box plot, the map and the text. So the aesthetic mapping, uh, there are visual properties of objects in the plot. So there are several different types of aesthetic mapping. The coordinates, these are arguments within the aesthetic mapping the aesthetic function rather. So we specify the first thing first is the coordinates, which, which uh, comes first, uh, which is the first argument in a aesthetic function. So the coordinates X come first, then Y. We separate them with a comma sign. But as I said, we can decide to specify, to be explicit about our X and Y, but usually we do not because X come f comes first before Y and the two are separated by a comma sign. Then we specify the size, the shape, the color, the few. The alpha refers to the transparency of the object within a plot. Then the stroke, the line type, the group, the show legend, others sometimes specify specific to a geom. Other, other arguments are specific to certain geom, certain geom functions. And um, I'm hoping that uh, in our, um, in subsequent um, lessons, we get to uh, be familiar with many of these arguments. So using the mapping argument and the aesthetic function to map an aesthetic to a variable in the data. So we use the ggplot function and the mapping in one of, okay. For example, can we see where my map, uh, my, my mouse is? The ggplot bracket, the data we are using, plus the geom function, then now we, we see that this is a bit different from the last structure, the structure we saw in our last page. Uh, this structure shows us that we can also use the aesthetic mapping within the geom function and not the ggplot function. So for example, we want to work with the MPG data set that comes with the ggplot2. It's already, when you install your ggplot2, when you install your tidyverse, you can use the MPG data that comes, data set that comes with it. So to call out this MPG data, you you infuse this to your arrow and you, you press your control enter. Then to check, to check the first three um, rows of this data set, you use add MPG, then you specify the MPG is the data that we are working on. So you, you put your MPG there then you specify the number of rows you want to see, which is three. But if you want to see more than that, you can, you can, I think you can only see about 10 of it. And you can also use this function, Glimpse, to, to view it. Um, I think view, um, Glimpse, Glimpse will help you to see the, uh, the structure of the so variable the, names of the structure of the data. But exactly the structure of the data set. So, um, so we want to plot it now. We have we have called out the data sets, then we want to plot it. So we have our ggplot, our data equals to the, the data set we are working on, which is the MPG. And um, for me personally, if I'm to type this out. 
and make sure that there is a space between the equal to sign and data and MPG to make it more readable. So we have data MPG to set up the base uh, plotting. Then we put our plus sign. Then we go to the next line and we initiate our geom, uh, our geometric uh, function. Here we are using geom point. Then we specify how we want to map it. We use mapping equals to aesthetics. We see X, X is display. So the display will appear on our X axis, then Y equals to, I think, um, uh, I, 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 I have forgotten what that really High, Highway miles per gallon. Okay, highway miles per gallon, yeah. So um, it will, this Y will be on the Y axis. Then we can, we can, after, after, we, have, after we have specified uh, the variable and uh, the axis they will be, we then close the bracket. Usually when you initiate a function, it comes with the two brackets. So you only have to impute your argument within it. Then after that, after the argument, we can now specify the color. Here, the color is blue. We can see um, the points in the in the the points showing the relationship between uh, the two variables and the x and the y axis. So here, the color appears outside the mapping. But what if it is set inside now? Now, what if this color we have specified outside of this aesthetic, which is, which is what the mapping is for? What happens when we take this argument within the aesthetic function? So here, um, the writer of this book says, is trying to let us notice that when you try to set the color inside the aesthetic, uh, call it results in random effect because the aesthetic function automatically figures out the necessary skill for your data. I want to call Mr. Oyedili to help us explain that line because I also struggle to understand it. But what I understand is that when you put um, the color within the aesthetic function, the color is not reflecting on the plot. Here we expect it to be blue, but it comes with a default red. Okay, so I think it's trying to tell us that when we want to specify the color, we should we should make it outside of the um, the mapping function. Um, I'm listening to you, sir. Okay, you know, in the first part, you specify the color outside the aesthetics. So that is my GT plot just. Uh, make sure all the points they are blue. But this one now we are specifying the color inside the aesthetics. But the function is going to look at your data set. Do we have any variable blue? Because the default statistics for John Point is as uh, a star identity, don't do anything with the data. So after ggplot has computed the statistics, the scaling aspect is the scaling aspect is going to look at your variable. Do we have any variable called blue in your data in, in your data set? ggplot uh, cannot find anything called blue in your data set. So it's going to scale the color equals to blue. Then it's going to come up with a random color, which is red that we are seeing. Then it's going to put the legend there, that color. Anytime you see red in my data set, know that it's color equals to blue. So that is what is happening in ggplot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. So, the next section of the, of the chapter is, is 
Hello? 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 So, um, in our last, um, in our last meeting, we saw the processes that is involved in um, data science. We import the data, we tidy the data, we transform the data to make it um, to, to, to have all our variables in place. Then we visualize through visualization, we see the relationship between variables, then we model. After that, we can explore if we are to transform or not, or and we go through the cycle before we communicate uh, the inferences we can draw from our data. So before you create your visualization, you need to have your data ready. Um, uh, this will be talked about in the coming chapters. The first thing is to import your data, tidy the data to have your variables ready to display. You transform the data as needed. You visualize the data with plots. Then you model. Finally, you communicate. So one more suggestion would be to sketch down your visualization beforehand and set the data ready and plot it. So uh, the type diverse tend to have a really good error message. Pay attention to what they say. Now, error messages are pointers to um, what we should do. One way to one way that I've been taught to learn R properly is to check when I run into an error. I copy the error message, put it on um, on on my search engine, then see what others are talking about the error. Then I'll get to and. Before we do that, try to understand what this error is saying. Um, you may not even need to search. It may just it may be telling you an omitted, um, an omitted um, element in what you're writing. Maybe you did not put comma in where you're supposed to put it, and it lets you know what line it is. So you can go there, you make necessary correction, and you run the the line again and see what it brings out. So you can use um, the question mark function name to see um, how a function works if you are if you're not sure how it works. So Googling an error message, Googling error messages can often be helpful. So take a deep breath. You've got this. <laughs> The next uh, part of the next part of this chapter is, uh, I think we have about just a little more than twenty minutes to go. So other functions and features. So other functions and features that we we get to know in. In this chapter, is face it. Um, you can subgroup your visualization with a face it function. So um, multiple plots on the same axis, comparing something across splits and data set, is made possible using the face it function. I, I would have loved to. Hello. Hello, we cannot hear you. It's like we lost him or so. Hello, Mr. Michael, are you still with us? It's like he's having internet issue. Uh, I can see Mr. Mosley, your, your hands is raised. Do you have any question? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
Yeah, thank you, sir. Hey, your, your screen on DG Plus. The guy, uh, the guy was talking about the, uh, instead of having the blue color there, for the, uh, for the got, where you got the red color. But you try to explain how the red color got here, but I don't, I don't understand. Can you explain again? Okay, so in that part, all right. As he was saying, we have a, our aesthetic mapping. We have specified what is going to X, what is going to our Y. Yes. And remember the first argument we have. Hello, sorry. Our... I was yes. not even aware that my 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 network already went off. Okay. I, uh, uh, please, can you let me know where I stopped, where I where the network tripped off? It's facetting. You are on facetting. Okay. But I'm trying to explain the static mapping about color. Somebody raised a question. I'm trying to explain. But just go and ahead and share your screen while I explain. All right. So, so as I was saying, the color is that you say color equals to blue within quotes. So what ggplot is going to do is that we already know that the default statistics for geometry zone points because each geometry in ggplot has a default statistics. So the default statistics for zone points is start is starts identity. Don't do anything. Grab everything that is coming in from the data set. So ggplot, after doing this, the statistics, when it comes to scaling, ggplot doesn't understand how to scale color equals to blue because there is nothing in your data set that is called blue. So what ggplot is going to do is that it's going to scale, it's going to scale the color equals to blue into one into just one single value, which is red that we are seeing on that plot. Because anything in which you map within the aesthetics, you are going to get a legend. So ggplot is going to place the legend there for you. Then it's going to say color equals to blue. Any, anytime you are seeing red in my plot, know that color equals to blue. So that is why we get red. Thank you very much, sir. Because why I ask questions is that uh, I experienced this issue uh, from I mean last month when I'm doing my analysis for my brother. So that I, I arranged the alarm to get it better. Thank you, sir. Okay. So um talking about the facet uh, function, so multiple plots on the same axis comparing something across split in a data set, there are two version, two versions of this function in ggplot2. So we have the face wrap, then we also have the face wing. The face wrap, uh, in the face wrap, the variable that you pass into should be discrete. The first read, the formula should contain two variable names separated by a tilde, tilde, um, tilde um, is it? Is it a is it a function? You yes, type it tilde. Tilde, tilde. I think we they, yeah. we used to specify an anonymous function, but you can also do vas where you can call in the exact name. But you use yes. tilde to separate the two. But you can also use vas where you can specify the name. Oh, thank you. So um, back to our plotting, we have. Uh, the ggplot with our data, uh, specifying uh, the data we are working on, which is the MPG data. And after that, we shouldn't forget to add the plus sign. Then we move to the next line, the geom point. Um, the geom point refers, that, uh, refers to that we are making scatter plots for this, this uh, visualization. Then we have the mapping, mapping aesthetics. We have specified display as display in the x axis. Then we have uh, the highway, highway, the highway variable in the y axis. Then we add the facet trap plus facet trap. This facet trap, um, we 
we have um, used this today uh, function to specify that okay we, we know that the variable the variable class contains um, factors factors within it so we don't have anything continuous all all um, all only have like a a a common um, how will I explain it a common like a few common words used to classify um, the the rules in this data set. So now in our face set, we also need to specify the number of rows. So we can see the number of rows equals to two here. So we have two, we have two, um rules in this face set we can see that each each um plot we can see about how many plots in this in this whole plot how many mini plots in this whole plot we have one two three four five six seven that means we have seven classes that we are using to face set this whole data I hope you all can, you all get what I'm trying to pass across. Then we have on the whole display, we have the display and the X axis. Then we have the other uh, variable and the Y axis. Um, and then we have the mini plot, which is the classes of the car that the MPG data set is about the about cars and their and their um, and their specifications. Cars and their specifications. These are the kinds of cars, the classes of cars that is in the data set. So we have faceted them and see for each for a two seater. Now for the first plot. But the, the 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 first plot is the plot on the top on the top left. We can see that we can see one, two, three, four, five. We can see about five data points comparing the display and the other. Uh, can you remind me what the other variable is so that I won't be skipping it? Highway, you called it a highway. Highway miles per gallon. Highway what? Miles per gallon. Okay, highway miles per. Okay, that's the um the amount of fuel. Yes, consumed, yes. Um, over a distance. So then the this displacement. Yeah, that's the speed, right? Something. Yeah. So we are comparing the speed. And the the, uh, the fuel um, used, um, so we can see for each we are, because we have faceted this data with the class, we can see mini plots that that um, that are for the class. So um, so we can use either the tilde function or the vast function to specify um, the, the, the variable you will want to face it with the, the discrete data, the discrete variable we want to face it with. So the next uh, part of this chapter is a statistical transformation of our, of our data. So, Lots of geoms use transform transformed data. For example, Geomba, Geomba stands stands for um, a bar chart. Well, if you want to plot plot a bar chart, you use Geomba. So, because a bar chart only works with um, only works with only works on one axis. Uh, you can you can I don't mean only works on one axis. It means that I was trying to say that. We only need to specify the data of one axis. 
So we are using this variable caught. Um, in our to show our courts uh, uh, and their name. So, what kind of the kind of courts we have in this data set? We have the fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal. Uh, to do this, we want to calculate first, we want to calculate the count for each court. So, we come to our the ggplot the 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 structure, then we instantiate the data we want to work on. The data is diamond. Uh, this data, this diamond data is different from the MP data. This diamond data also comes with uh, ggplots too. So just like we did for, um, just like we did for MPG data, we can call out this diamond data by um, writing out ggplots, two semicolons, two colons, then we write out diamond, then we press our control to show our diamonds. And after that, we use our Jumba and we map the court into our, into our X variable. So this is the display. It shows, it shows the, the different kinds of courts and the accounts. The count is on the x-axis, but we don't have to specify the, the counts. So start function can do this calculation. And so somebody has a question. Darling has a question. All right. Please go on with your question. Cut the Jumba function. I haven't understood the cut in aesthetics argument. I still don't hear you properly. Would you mind if you move back? She said you should explain the Jumba function again. She did not understand. Okay, the Jumba function is used to plot the bar chart. When a bar chart, this is a typical bar chart. A bar chart shows, this is a bar chart. This is a bar chart here. We see bars showing um, this bar chart corresponds to the number of, these are the kinds of diamonds. Then if you want to know the number of diamonds, we want to compare them these different kinds of um, chords in a diamond. We want to compare them based on their number. A bar chart is a useful plot for this kind of... Uh, okay, can I, chip, can I chip in something? All right. Okay, as you said earlier, this geometry in GG plot, they always have a default statistics, like the bar charts, the default statistics of a bar chart is start counts. So like now you, you have passed in just one variable, that is x equals to cut. So what ggplot is going to do is that it's going to go into your data set for each cut. It's going to do each count for each cut. Like for fair, it's going to count how many variable fall on that fair. It's going to count all those variable and it's going to plot them in the y-axis. But in, the, in some instance, you can have, you can pass in both x and y variable to the jump bar function. In that case, you need to overwrite the statistics. So in that case, you need to pass in a new argument, start equals identity. So start equals identity will overwrite the start count. So start equals identity is that don't do anything. You are telling ggplot, don't do anything, but pick everything that I am feeding to you from the data sets. So that is the trick. So if you want to use Jumba to plot a bar plot, you need to override. You need to override the default statistics. If not, you will get error. You will get an error. I don't know if I explanation. 
I hope you got the explanation. Is it clear now? Hello? Yes, it is. All right, thank you very much. I think we are already running out of time. So the the next is we can use that function to to do this calculation. So the start count um, with with uh, with the question mark before it shows what start count does, as I've explained for um, how to check for what a function does. You just have to put your 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 question mark then the function you want to know. Uh, so we can adjust the positions within um, an aesthetics. Uh, so geoms within a geom, we can adjust positions within a geom function. Uh, geoms have a position argument to tell it how to deal with things. That that go on top of one another. So sample value includes stack identity, few, dodge, and jitta. So we have geom jitta is a short call for geom point, then specifying jitta as the position because um, this geom jitta is, is 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 a short form of this order. I hope you all can see my screen. For those who are not viewing the screen, um, yes, Geo Jitter. Zoom. Okay. I think I have a message in this chat. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Um, okay. I don't know how to use the Zoom here. I mean, just screw up so that they can see the jitter, the plot, scatter plots. Okay, okay. So, okay. Um, the geom jitter is a shortcut for this uh, geom point with position equals jitter argument. So, and it's a very useful, according to them, according to the writer of the book. So, let's, let's assume we have a data. We have we, we just um, simulated the data here. Uh, Tibu x equals to we want to repeat one to three three times. This rep, rep, rep function is repeat. So one to three in in three times. Y is also one to three in three times. So we want to plot it. So we have the gg plot. We have. This is the data we have simulated. So we have our first argument in ggplot is to is to call out the data we have just simulated, which is the DAT. You know, we simulated the data here, Tibu equals to DAT here. Then we put it here. Then we want to plot. We, we want to plot it. Uh, aesthetics x and y. Then we add our geom point. So this is the result of. This is the resulting uh, plot from what we have just the code we have just written. So what happens if instead of geom point we use Geom jitters, geom jitter. We see. Um, I think I understand this, but I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm struggling to really articulate an explanation for it. Um, I don't know if Mr. Olifemi can help out. Okay, I think I post something on the chat. Uh, the geom jitter is very useful in 
the sense that if you are trying to do your data visualization, you want to avoid overplotting. So I think the Geom Jitter is very useful. That is where you can use the Geom Jitter to jitter to spread to spread out the points a little bit. Well, thank you. I think I'll have to write it down uh, in case uh, we come across it again. I'll have uh, a better explanation to give. So um, we can see a bit of difference. So we can also use other um, arguments not only on geom jitter and we can also use it on all geom uh, functions we can um, specify the width the height the size of the points so i'm coming we are we are almost there yeah, i think we should finish up this is the last part of the of the chapter. So uh, we can add coordinate systems to our ggplot with uh, coordinate flip, coordinate quick map, coordinate polar, coordinate fix functions. So by default, the ggplot use coordinate Cartesian, but you can add other functions. So what does cord flip do? Cord flip is useful to quickly flip orientation, although this is less necessary in modern ggplot than when this book was written. I think this code flip was usually used then, but now because they use code Cartesian, part of the function of code Cartesian and the argument within it might have overridden the functions of this code flip. So now there is an orientation argument within the code Cartesian that does the function of this chord flip function. So this chord flip, like it flips the orientation of, um, of uh, within a ggplot. But if you want to specify that function in, uh, in, the, in the new ggplot, you just use the orientation to flip whatever you want to flip. It's an argument within the chord partition. So what is chord, what does chord, chord creep map? function do. The chord creep map does proper transformations to work with longitude and latitude data. So we know that if we want to associate quad creep map, map for longitude and latitude. Uh, for those of us who that did geography in secondary school, we can associate map with longitude and latitude chord polar for circular plots, which are almost always a bad idea, but they tend to look cool. We get to know why they are bad ideas, why using that is a bad idea um, in our subsequent, in one of our classes later. So chord fix sets the same limit to both axes. We want to fix limits. We want to limit, um, we don't want like a mismatch in orientation for the two axes, we use chord fix. So we can also specify team. We want to know the color, the team, how it look like, the team of our, our plot. We use the team function. So once your data are imported, tidied and transformed adequately for obtaining desired visualization. You can set up a plot with extra features. So it's possible to add a theme to your GG plot. This is done to customize the non-data component of your plot. The non-data component refers to the background, the legend, the, the, the text, the text of your, of your plot. So what are the components of this team? You can, the titles, the labels, the fonts, you can change the fonts using the team, the grid lines, you can also add grid lines to your plot. You can add legends to your plot. For example, if you would like to customize the background to your plot, so we use our, okay, this is this a, um, a skeleton, a skeleton sketch, a skeleton structure of 
how to uh, set a, a, a background scene for your plot. So you have, spe you have called out your ggplot function. You've added a geomblank function. Geomblank can be replaced with any function you are interested in working with. It can be geompoint, geombar, anything else. Then you call out your team function. So we plot the background. This is what you want. This plot background is an argument to specify the theme for your own, the whole background of your plot. So you use the element rectangle, element rect. This is a function within the, um, the theme function, a function within the function. So we have a rectangle function, a rectangular function within the theme. Then we specify this rectangular color we specify it to be red, and we want the size to be two, and we'll fill it with a gold. So we see at the edge of this plot we are seeing below, we see the red, uh, the red line uh, boundary, um, uh, the red line boundary. Then within it, we see the uh, golden the golden um, rectangle with uh, inside it. Then we also specify the panel background. We have the background, we have the panel. So we have the element rectangle. We see the inside, it's, it's almost like the inside of the rectangle and the outside of the rectangle. The inside of the rectangle, we have specified the color to be gray, the size to be five. We see the size is bigger than, um, the size of the red, the size of the gray square, uh, the gray rectangle rather. Then we fill the whole of the rest of the panel background with dark blue. That's why it's showing it bigger than, but if we do not specify the panel background, what I, I'm asking this to everyone else, apart from Mr. Luafemi, so that I know that we're all following, what would show us the few, if we did not specify the bar, panel background. I want someone to answer because this is the end of. Would it all be gold if there was no panel inside the, the background? Great, thank you very much, sir. So you can customize a team. There are many different teams provided by default. Uh, in ggplot2, we have, uh, these are the default, um, these are the default teams within the ggplot2. We have the team classic, uh, the team minimal, and the team void, just to name a few. This function, those functions can be further customized by adding the team customization. So, um, I think the next part of the book, uh, chapter is the summary of what we have discussed today. To summarize everything we have discussed, we have been discussing for over an hour now. Um, so the ggplot, implement the ledgered grammar of graphics. And this is the structure. This structure is how ggplot uh, functions and elements and elements and arguments are specified in ggplot2. We have the ggplot, we call out our data, we add, uh, we add geom function to it, then we specify our aesthetic, then we can use statistics. We can, where stat is, we can use any form of statistics. We can use mean, median. We can also specify um, the measure of dispersion, uh, standard deviation and all that. And we can also specify the positions, um, jitter and some other position function. Then we can add, coordinate function, facet function, and team function. 
um, we know that when we call out the ggplot function, we need to add data to, we, we call out a data argument, we add the data we're working on to set, to set up the base with a, the base plot with the data. Then we have the geom function for adding geometry. Then within the geo function, we can now specify how our variables should be mapped within this um, function. So mapping is a function for mapping for 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 aesthetic mapping. Uh, we want to oh I'll continue. So the start helps to transform the data. The aesthetic function do the mapping. The position deal with things that overlap. The coordinate function adjusts the coordinate layout. The facet function breaks the plot into small multiples. In addition, it is possible to subset data inside the ggplot function or inside the geom um, function. So uh, to do that, we can use uh, the geom smooth. We, we, we use this filter, I give a uh, filter verb. Uh, these are verbs. Yeah used in data wrangling. I think we'll get to understand this more when we get to that part of the book. So we can learn more about all this from these resources provided here and the exercises and solutions are found in this link here. Thank you very much for uh, being part of today's session. Uh, and thank you for listening to me and giving me the opportunity to uh, contribute to this cohort. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Michael. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize uh, for the extra time because uh, the meeting is supposed to just be one hour. I think we are 12 minutes uh, behind schedule. I want to apologize for that. I think next week, uh, I think will be the next week chapter, it will be looking at our workflow basics. I don't know, I think. Mr. Tim, you'll be taking us through that chapter. Yeah, I will. Yes, yeah, I've started looking at it and hopefully I'll, I'll pull it all <laughs> together by next Monday now. <laughs> okay, oh, in great. case you have any challenge, you can just ping me in the Slack. I, I can help you because looking at, look at the chapter, I think the chapter is a quite short. It's not quite long, but I would prefer if you can add more exercise. Maybe you can just do more exercise so that we can really expand the chapter a little bit. Because okay. looking at this short, okay. the, the chapter is short. I have to look at the chapter is short. Okay. okay. So see you all at the same time next week, Monday. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye.